wired not to want to change. So we have to deliberately coax the brain into motivational reasons, emotional reasons. You have to have intrinsic reasons. Why must you do this? And so you can use pain as a frame as well. So if you don't, then are you okay with your life being like this at this age in five years and 10 years and 20 years? And if you're okay with that, then you're, you're not a candidate for change. But if you're committed to letting go of the old so you can create the new, and you create motivations every day, that's where the power is. So if you can start to formulate a habit, a daily habit, a weekly habit, it doesn't matter how long it is. If you can create that space in your brain that on this day, at this time, this is what I do, and you do that repeatedly, that becomes a habit. And it takes those 66 days or so for a simple habit that you have to consciously do to then the habit doing you. And that's why they say we are all creatures of habit, because habits run themselves. Their subconscious programs just run themselves. Most people don't take the time to become aware, what are my empowering habits? What are my disempowering habits? And then the next question is, well, how do I release this one? And how do I strengthen this one or create a whole new one? And what we're looking to do is build empowering habits that then run, run their course. What is a belief? I mean, think about what is a belief? And let's go to, again, I, I just like to go to the neuroscience field because it's just my passion now, is a belief is nothing more than a group of cells that have been connected and then reinforced. And we have two types of beliefs. We have beliefs that what I- Really fast, I'm gonna stop you there because that's so important yeah. and so different than I would have expected. I think when people hear belief, it is believe in something that is true, which did not enter into your definition. No, we, we believe. Whatever we believe is truth for us, but it's not the truth. When you were a baby, when you were born, what belief did you have? Zero, goose egg, zero, not one. And so you learned what to believe and how to even formulate your beliefs. Chances are from parents, teachers, brothers, sisters, television, maybe when you read some books, right? And we behave based on what we believe. So we might be behaving our lives away based on false or inaccurate or disempowering beliefs. So if a belief is a neural pattern in the brain, then we probably have some good ones, empowering ones, useful ones, and chances are we have some that are not useful, not empowering, and not worthy of the geniuses that we all are. So the question is, is it possible for me to develop new beliefs that I don't believe right now? Mm. The answer is yeah. The so answer what's that yeah. process look like? So, the process is you can read new beliefs to life. And so if you listen to beliefs that are empowering over and over and over again, and you emotionalize them, and you visualize yourself actually acting out those beliefs, and you learn how to pay attention to that little inner critic that says, that's bullshit, that's not true, that'll never come true, that's not true. If you learn and you remember that that little voice is there to consistently keep you in this homeostatic place and it's there to protect the beliefs that are there now. It's interesting, so I've heard you now a few times and, and the first few times it didn't really make my radar, but you always say release weight. You never yes. say lose weight. Yeah, what do you do when you lose something? Look for it. Yeah, I don't wanna look for weight that I've lost. <laughs> I want to release it. I like to use language patterns as well that are going to empower me versus disempower me. Uh, Self-talk is so critical. And so I'm consistently paying attention to how am I speaking to myself? Am I speaking to myself in a kind, motivating, empathetic, compassionate way? Or am I consistently self-deprecating and putting myself down? I used to think a lot of, like, you know, when I was younger, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not worthy. Um, those thoughts uh, and you know, lots of fear, fear of being embarrassed, fear of failure, fear of being ashamed. And I still have 
the thoughts every once in a while, especially when I'm setting new goals, those come up, holy mackerel, they come up so freaking fast. Are, are you smart enough to achieve that? Are you good enough to achieve that? Even when I got into really diving deep into the brain science and even my new book, I, had, I was petrified to release my book. It took me two years to write it because now I'm entering another whole domain of neuroscience and neuropsychology with world-renowned experts that I've worked with for years. But now here I am putting myself out there with, hey, this is neuroscientifically correct. So I had, I had to make sure that it was. Um, and, but there was a lot of fear. Um, but I understand what the emotion of fear is. It's a subconscious trigger that causes this feeling that I don't like. And it's a ghost signal for me, not a stop signal.